Hey guys, we're going to go back to the Dutch bucket, the hydroponic stuff for a few minutes. As you can see, they're doing pretty good. I've got them pruned up a little bit more than I normally would have. I've had some fungal issues and typically on a tomato when you have a fungus, whether it be blight, leaf mold, uh, septoria, it's generally going to start at the bottom and work its way up. And this is where sometimes having a single stem method actually uh, plays to your favor. You're able to go ahead and prune those lower leaves off and kind of follow that thing up and see if you can get control of it. We went through a couple of weeks there where it was hot and humid and specifically one week where it just seemed like it rained every single day. Uh, extremely humid and uh, this stuff was hard to handle. I've been making progress a little bit at a time. We've had some drier weather here now and I think I've still got some more leaves I need to prune off and uh, see if I can get back on top of this thing. If you were to set this up outside, I would recommend going with something heavier in the buckets, uh, whether you went with those big rocks, uh, smaller rocks, or as uh, was suggested, uh, pea gravel. Go to rock quarry and get you some pea gravel. Something heavy to put in those buckets so they wouldn't blow around because if you just put perlite in there, they'd be more prone to move around. Although, if you go ahead and uh, put your tomatoes in there and put your steak on the side, depending on what kind you were going to do, uh, as far as a variety, uh, your bucket would stay in place. It's just something to think about when you're doing this outside. Uh, I don't have a wind issue inside the greenhouse here, but if I set this up outside, I would definitely have to set it up in a way that I was prepared to handle the wind. Right here is my other little small setup I got that I'm doing some cucumbers in. I don't have this one hooked up with a, a pump right now circulating, so I just come by a few times a day, water them manually by hand, and they seem to be doing okay. I had a lot of questions about what type of container or bucket you could actually use and it, it's as simple as this. Any type of bucket, be it square, round, rectangle, oval, oblong, whatever shape it may be, uh, if it will hold water and has a side that's at least you know three inches wide where you can drill a one inch hole and put a grommet in it, it will work. This right here is a pak choy that is growing in a little OxyClean tub, probably less than one gallon. Just wash it out real good, drill me a hole in the end of it, put my grommet in my a PVC pipe through it, elbow on the inside, set it right in place, and I'm just watering this stuff by hand. I had mentioned that I thought the air pump would be optional. You may or may not have to have it. I've gotten comments from people who did aquaponics and uh, they were suggesting that just the, uh, the water flow itself moving through the buckets, coming back to the reservoir would provide plenty of oxygen to it and you wouldn't need the air pumps. That makes sense to me. But for the time being, I'm going to leave the air stones in there. I'm going to go over the fertilizer again. This is the question I get asked most often. What am I using? Where do I get it from? Uh, there are a lot of fertilizers out there that you can use. Uh, liquid, uh, powder, the water soluble stuff some organic or natural based, a lot of things to choose from. This is just what I choose right here. It's nice and simple, easy to work with. Master Blend, this is for 1838. This is actually a tomato fertilizer, set up for tomatoes. You add calcium nitrate. I've got a container right here, calcium nitrate. There's actually 15500 is the NPK on it. This I've got Epsom salt. You have to put Epsom salt in this. Basically what you're doing, you're taking this and these other ingredients and making a complete fertilizer. And this is what I have the fertilizer in. It's kind of greenish looking. Everybody's seen the blue stuff. Well, this is the green stuff. What I did was take their formula that's on this bag, the mix ratio, and break it down to a five gallon level so I can mix it in a five gallon bucket. They had this formula is also available online. What it came out to be was 12 grams of the fertilizer 12 grams calcium nitrate and 6 grams of magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt. I've got a digital scale, set it on here, zero it out, pour 12 grams of one, dump it in the bucket, 12 grams of the next one, and sometimes if I'm feeling pretty good, I just go ahead and pour 12 and then start the next one on top and I'll end up with 12, 12, 6, end up with 30 grams in here, I know I'm right. You just got to be careful you don't dump a whole lot of one and have to get it back out. Where do I order this from? I get it from Morgan County Seeds out of Missouri. 
Those are people I've mentioned them several times, easy to deal with. Pick up the phone and call them, tell them what you want. They send it right to you. They carry this 41838. It's not going to be cheap because you got to pay the shipping cost on a 25 pound bag. But a little bit goes a very long way. Uh, if you go online and you look up uh, hydrogardens.com, they carry the entire line of this master blend. They make it for tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, strawberries, different formulations tailored specifically to that type of vegetable. I have used this in my lettuce. Basically what I did, instead of doing 12, 12, 6, I cut it back 10, 10, 5. and just cutting back the fertilizer levels because I know lettuce doesn't eat as much as tomato does. Fertilizers, if you're doing it on a homegrown basis, uh, you don't have to be precise. If you got a $50,000 greenhouse set up and you are doing this for business, you want everything to be exactly perfect and you need to be able to maximize exactly what's going into those plants. And that's where you have to really fine tune the levels. But for a home gardener, uh, if you get close to it, it'll be fine. All right, guys, as you can see, Things rolling right along like I had hoped they would. The Dutch bucket's working out just fine. More than likely, come next spring, first part of the year, there will be a solid line of buckets over here. I'm going to dig the soil down hard as it is. I'm going to dig it out and bury my reservoirs, make this stuff so I can put the buckets on the ground. It'll be a lot easier for me to work with and get started and not have to build these platforms and go ahead and line up probably a whole row of cucumbers, do the slicing cucumbers, pickling, and then a solid row of tomatoes, and over there where the other row of tomatoes are at, come back with uh, pole beans and whatever else, maybe some melons to come up the strings, and then put peppers and things like that on the other side. But this is not meant to take the place of anything outside. It shouldn't be looked at that way. For me, I said this before, talking about gardening, there's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different methods out there. And to me, the more you know, the more options you have at your disposal, the more successful you're gonna be. If for whatever reason, you don't have the option to grow in ground, hydroponics would be a great priority number one. Uh, if you have excellent soil outside, then to me, that should be your first focus. Hydroponics should be second, uh, unless you just decide that you really like this and then switch it up. Is the hydroponic stuff quite as nutritious as what you get in the ground? Uh, it's impossible to be so, unless the ground that you're growing in is just absolutely so uh, nutrient depleted that it can't compare with the uh, micronutrients that are already put into a commercial fertilizer like the Master Blend. It's kind of hard to compare that apples and oranges deal sometimes. For me, the goal is to be able to grow food and put as much on my plate that came from the production of my hands as opposed to somebody in a field out in Napa Valley, somewhere down in Mexico, somewhere in you know Asia somewhere, and you never know what they sprayed on it, what they put into it, bring it back, put it in the grocery store, and you go get it. Uh, I'd rather just stick with something that I know exactly what was sprayed on it, when it was sprayed on it. And as Cat's Cradle said, if you don't grow it, you don't know it. It can have an organic label on the top, bottom sides, and open the lid and one on the inside, and it don't mean squat when it comes down to it. How many times have you heard about stuff that got on the shelf that had salmonella in it and it had USDA approved and all this kind of stuff? Bull. Just get out there and grow your own stuff and tell the folks who run in the supermarkets, hey, look, I might be by to get some sugar or salt or something like that, you know, but the rest of them vegetables, y'all can keep those things. I'm growing my own. So I got off a little bit there, but as you can see, I believe in what I'm doing. Um, I want to show other people how to do this, how to become more self-sufficient, get away from that stuff of going to the store and buying so much processed food, grow your own food, stop eating that crap, and you'll be a whole lot better off. So y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.